Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 20, and today we're talking about the Delay Module in the Effects tab. So for this demonstration, on the Synth section, I have an analog engine, and it's just a saw wave going to the delay right here. So if we hit a few notes, let's see what happens. We hear a bone dry saw wave, and that's because this delay dry wet is down. As we increase this up here, we start hearing our delay. And we have a very cool graph here to kind of see what's going on. So the first knob over here is time sync. So now by default, this is gonna be synced to your tempo at one over four. We can increase this at one over two, and it's gonna slow down those delays. And then one, I think you get the idea. We can also go a lot faster too, if we turn this to the left, like one over 16. And very fast at one over 32 which is kind of like reverb, which pretty much that's what reverb is. Now we don't have to be just in sync mode. We can also go to the sync triplets or sync dotted. But what I really want to show you is this time value here. So now you can really fine tune a certain delay in milliseconds. So let's say someone wants uh, 200 milliseconds exactly. You can drag this knob over here and then you're crossing over and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm just passing this 200. A little tip, you can always right click and hold down the knob and then it goes into fine increments so you can get exactly what you want. So that's a time knob in a nutshell. Let's go back over here to the sync and let's double click this to go one over four again. And we can always see this graph here is changing according to the parameters that we change. Moving on, we have this fine knob here. So what's interesting about this is let's take a listen to the delay right over here for this knob being in the center, so no change at all at zero. And let's look over here on the right-hand side and also listen to the, to the time it takes for each delay to hit. Now with this knob all the way to the right, we can see it also gives a little bit of difference here, makes it a little bit longer. And then all the way to the left, it's gonna make it a little bit shorter. So it's kind of adjusting, it has a specific time of delay and based upon if we turn it to the left, it's gonna offset it just a little bit quicker and then to the right, it's gonna make it a little bit longer and then up in the center is gonna be no change. So that's kind of a cool cool feature here. If you, want to, if you want one over four, but maybe just a little bit longer or shorter or something like that, that's why you'd reach for this fine knob over here. And then moving on to the feedback is basically how many of these delays are you going to hear. So if we turn this up quite a bit here, we can see this level increasing here, which goes on quite a bit. If we bring this all the way down, we just get one extra, one delay. So the signal gets delayed once. And we bring it over here and we can see these sliders over here in the center kind of start increasing. And then moving on, we let's double click this here, and then we have the stereo spread. So listen to how this sounds normally. It's almost a very centered delay, and as we increase this here, we can start to feel that it's becoming much more stereoized and very exaggerated. And then let's double click this for default. So it's gonna be basically a mono delay, and then we turn this up and does the stereo spread right there. So the double click that to go back to default and then now we have an HP frequency. So now if we hit this and we bring this up here, you can see over here, we're starting to cut out the low end. So maybe you want that type of delay. That's why you reach for this high pass frequency knob. And then the opposite is also true on the low pass frequency. And this is a knob that I generally say you should always reach for. Because in the real world, when something delays, it's always going to lose a little bit of high-frequency content when it comes back to you. So you don't want something just to repeat like that. So you want to kind of drag this down a little bit. So maybe something right here. Maybe it's a little exaggerated, but I think you get the idea. It's going to sound much more natural if you shave off a little bit of that. A little bit of that top end. And you can see that reflected in the graph as well. If this is all the way to the top, these bars are basically going to kind of be the same, just decreasing in amplitude over time. And the very last thing here, we have ping pong, which is one of my personal favorites in delays. So it kind of ping pongs the delay back and forth. So here's default. And then now with ping pong. Default. Default. 
And you might notice when we toggle between ping pong and regular, we see that this stereo width knob starts to change. So as we move this back and forth, and this is really cool if you have a lot of fast stuff going on, maybe like one over eight or something like that and you have a lot of feedback going. really fill up the uh, the stereo spectrum and that's just with one saw wave going through one delay module with a little bit of frequency cut off here So pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This is a very fantastic delay. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the pitch shifting delay, which also has a lot of cool little quirks to it as well. So look forward to that video and we'll see you in that one.